I'd like to give a thank you to WD-40 brand for sponsoring this video. Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Dad is going to be heading out here any moment now to start raking the hay that we cut seven days ago. So we played the waiting game and turns out it worked in our favor. Um, this hasn't been a great drying week. Uh, however, we had uh, high humidity, i.e. rain showers come through the area, but we were lucky enough to not get hit over the weekend. So uh, it's come high time to get the hay made. This may be our last cutting off the main farms. Uh, I might try to get another cutting off of one of my fields, but we're thinking that this could very well be the third and final cut uh, off the farms because uh, we got started cutting very late in June. So it pushed us back enough to where it might most likely not come back enough in time to be worth cutting again. And if we do, we'll have to wait until the first hard freeze and then go through and knock off the alfalfa. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So today I'm gonna be baling and uh, we're gonna be hauling the bales in from the 11 acres, which means we gotta hook my truck up to the flatbed trailer. And uh, I've got my Kurt Puck system here, which is my gooseneck ball. Um, it's really simple. It's just two ball bearings that hold the ball itself in. And uh, it's been a while since I've lubricated it. So on the top, we're gonna give it a, t a dab of grease when we're done. That'll give the trailer uh, hitch lubrication as it slides around on there. Uh, however, on the bottom, I don't recommend using grease because it can sneak behind these ball bearings, which is kind of a weird design if you ask me on the uh, truck manufacturer's part. Um, you know, I've never been real crazy about this design, but it seems like it's been working pretty good so far. But uh, instead of using grease to lubricate the ball bearings in here, we're gonna try out WD-40 Specialist Gel Lube. And uh, we're gonna lubricate behind the ball bearings in there to hopefully keep it from building up all that dirt and debris. We're using regular grease, it just collects dirt so easily. But uh, we're gonna lubricate that. I might clean off the top here where it locks. Uh, that's full of grease itself, but uh, that's gonna get grease in the end anyway, so there's not a lot that I can do up on top to clean it out. But we can try. Get a lot of that gunk off there. It actually works pretty good for cleaning it off. Huh. Mm, I'm gonna like that a lot better. The top is gonna get grease anyway, but we're gonna give the locking mechanism a little spray down as well. I opted for the WD-40 Specialist Gel Lube because it stays where you spray, it doesn't drip, and it's great for vertical surfaces such as this one. Now that we've got the gooseneck ball installed, we can go ahead, head over to the farm, hook this up to the trailer. Dad's gonna be heading out here any moment now with the rake to start raking, and we're gonna hop in the 82 Start bailing. Luna, come here.
The 82 got a bath yesterday. Dad took the 4020 and the bar rake down and he's doing a bunch of the waterways and smaller areas that Travis cut a few days after we cut the first of the contours. And uh, Travis is gonna come back and get the 76 and the other baler. And there's our guidance. So we just got auto steer enabled for the 8235R. Uh, I'm not gonna be using it today, but it's gonna really come in handy when we're doing stuff like tillage in the spring and fall. But uh, we're about to get started. About to fire up the 82. We're gonna head out to my place. Ooh, almost didn't wanna start there. Let's see what the moisture is running out of here. We're gonna bail one and I'll hop out and check the moisture on it quick. Ooh, it's a tight bail. <clears throat> Twenty-eight point two. Now that's wet. I tell you what, we have not had good drying conditions the last week, and just the air outside feels extremely damp. I don't have high hopes for these bales. Just looking at the hay out here, I was hoping that it'd be much drier than it is, but we'll see. Twenty-two. I was hoping to see it at least a little bit more dry considering it's been down for a week. But between the clouds that we've had for the last four days, it was supposed to be nice and sunny out today, but it's still mostly cloudy. Plan B, since we can't make bales quite yet today, the sun didn't come out like we were hoping, and the bales are anywhere between 22 and 36%. So we're gonna let them sit for another day, and that'll be in a different video. So um, brought the 82 back, we're still on the truck. I'm gonna go out, get those three bales that I made, take them back to the farm, set them out, let them air out, away from all the buildings and all the other bales. And I might go see if I can go up to Lancaster and get a bunch of uh, corral panels, self-standing gates uh, for around the barn, because if you were, might remember, I've been working at tearing that bar barn foundation out of there and I need something to replace it. Uh, just for the meantime, in the, just for the meantime, until I figure out, you know, what the game plan is from here as far as taking off that mound next to it and uh, possibly putting in a different building at some point. I don't know what I'm going to do quite yet. It's just kind of all up into the air. But what I've got there now is a lot better than what was there. and It was just a falling barn foundation. So let's head out to the field and grab those bales and take them home. Hey, I'm looking for uh, self-standing cattle panels. I was wondering what you guys might have on hand. Um, we've got the tall ones, the five foot eight. Okay. Is there anybody up there right now I could come and pick them up from? Yes, there is. Okay. Um, I might have to run home and grab my checkbook, but these gates must be in high demand. Well, that was an expensive trip, but I've been wanting some of these panels for a while. I'm gonna put these around the barnyard for the time being until we figure out something long-term to do down here. Um, at the current point, I'm trying to decide the best way to put a building up, long-term speaking, and uh, I'm trying to decide what the best route to go about it would be, because if you ask me, the best way to do it would be to set it up similar to the pole shed with 
the open end facing to the south so that the sun can warm up the cows in the winter. So to do that, we'd actually have to put it in maybe down from the water or from the chicken coop up. And that would take up a big chunk of space along here. But I mean, it's not all that steep uh, angled wise. I mean, I feel like we could either cut this down. Um, actually, we could probably cut this down, put in a cement wall here and then go down and uh, you could get it pretty level. I'd like to have it similar to the pole shed where it's sloping down into the barnyard. So then all the moisture drains away from the bed pack. Um, and I'm thinking about possibly using the barnyard here for the steers and putting the cows down into the steer lot. And then possibly long-term speaking, if we put a uh, building this way, then uh, what we could do would be to put an open end somewhere down there where the cows can get up into a portion of the building to give them some shelter for the time being. So I don't know, that's just the current game plan, whether it's right or wrong, or if I'll come up with a better idea. There actually used to be another building down uh, at the bottom of that second lot over there. And while I'm cleaning the manure pack up, remnants of it are still found to this day. So um, I imagine it'll probably be the same with this area in here. Uh, I could actually have, have this set up as a loading area if I really wanted to short term um, and then let the calves up into the cement over there because the hard part with this is that yeah there's cement down underneath it but it's all tore up and it's in not very good condition because they had the bunk in there I wanted the bunk gone which I did but now underneath it's a lot of rock and a lot of broken up cement so um, long term you know even going into next year I'm thinking possibly to come in here and start tearing up the rest of that cement underneath, whether I will or not. Uh, I'd like to definitely do it, but if, if I get to it next year, I guess we'll just have to see. But right now I wanna get this fenced off so that uh, we, it'll turn cattle so I can get them back up into the barnyard when the time comes. Um, in the meantime, you know, I can pick, pick away at this if I want to, but I'm not sure that I wanna put any more of the cement down in the ditch where it's been going. I'm thinking maybe put it in uh, another ravine back there because I've actually got that leveled off now with rock to where I could put dirt over it and it would fill that ravine quite nicely. That's right, picking up bales. Let's hop in the bobcat, load these three bales up, and take them back home.
three bales hauled in and I'm gonna let them sit out until I feel that they're ready to go through the wrapper. But uh, for the time being, we're gonna let the hay sit until we feel it's dry enough to go through. We've got it raked up, it's off, off the ground, but uh, they're not calling for any rain until the end of the week. So we might as well just let it sit out and dry starting pretty much tomorrow. They're saying that we're supposed to have warmer temperatures and it's supposed to be sunny pretty much all week. So I'm sure it'll be good hay drying weather then. We haven't had any anything good for the last week. So I'm gonna sit on those panels for the time being until I figure out exactly what I wanna do with them. Right now I'm thinking I'm gonna run three panels around the outside of where the barn was and then go across with more to make kind of like a chute slash loading area um, like we used to use it for. Uh, three of the gates out of the 10, three of the panels, uh, out of the 10 have hinges on them where you can mount full gates on there so you can swing you can use it as a swing point for working cattle which I thought was nice when I heard the that I could get that I, I opted for three of them but uh, for the time being I'm gonna sit and think exactly how I want to lay them out before I go into it uh, I have a little bit but yet before I got to get the cows up into the barnyard so that's not like I don't have time to think about it plus if I get more time to work in the barnyard I will use it and with that, thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And for those of you who are short film fans, one of the kids that I went to high school with is getting his foot in the door with film. And he made a short film about a farmer who thinks that UFOs are flying over his land. Short films are really something else. I used to watch quite a few of them back in the day, actually. And uh, they actually served as inspiration for uh, my YouTube channel as a whole. So. If you're interested in watching that, I'll leave it the link down in the description. But with that, I'll see you next time.